In this video, I'm going to talk about couplings. So in SimBrain, uh, I've mostly talked so far in other videos just about how to do things in a single network window. So, you know, making a bunch of neurons and connecting them and then, you know, running a little network like this. Um, but in a SimBrain simulation, often you'll want to do something that goes beyond an individual network window and that connects a network with other components. For example, a simulated world like this one. We've seen this uh, simulation before. This is the Breitenberg Pursuer. And you could see that the network is actually controlling an agent. And so there's some kind of coupling between the agent and the network. In this case, these sensors uh, send activations to these nodes here. And then these nodes uh, send their activation back to the agent and determine how it will move. Mm -hmm. um, another example would be a plot. And uh, you know you can see what's going on here is that um, these nodes, uh, their activations are plotted as bars here. And so we've got to have some way of connecting these node activations uh, to these bars in this bar chart. And the thing that accomplishes that in SimBrain is called a coupling. And I've got a web page in the docs on it that gives you kind of the, the, the background theory behind it. And I want to, you know, just to start, go through that. Um, so that you know what the ideas are, you understand the basic concepts, and I think if you have a kind of conceptual template in your head of how this works, it'll make it much easier to build your own simulations that span multiple desktop components. Um, so the basic idea with a coupling is that it is a pair that has a producer and a consumer, and we've represented that with this picture here. Um, producers and consumers are both what we call attributes, so it's a pair of attributes, one of which, again, produces some value, and the other which consumes some value. Um, now, attributes have types. Um, and you to have a coupling, you've got to have a producer and a consumer of the same type, which we represent here with these shapes. Um, so you have to have a scalar producer attached to a scalar consumer, a vector producer attached to a vector consumer, or a text producer attached to a text consumer. And you can sort of see the way we drew these images. They, they fit together, right? So you couldn't have a scalar producer with a vector consumer. Um, and so then that will produce these three types of coupling, a scalar coupling, a vector coupling, and a text coupling. And we could, in, in the future, have other types of coupling and other types of attribute as well. All right, to get a sense of how this works, there's a few windows you could look at. To begin with, there's this coupling window, or this coupling list window. And it just shows you a list of all the couplings in the current um, SimBrain workspace, in the current desktop. And right now, there is one coupling and the, it's got a producer on the left of this uh, sort of arrow and a consumer on the right. And uh, both producers and consumers uh, will start by saying which uh, component they're part of. So producers and consumers attributes always are attached to a particular workspace component. So here we've got the recurrent network uh, is, that holds the producer. Um, and then this bar chart of the network is the consumer. So that's one way you could look at it. Maybe a more revealing way is with this coupling manager. So you could either use this menu item or this button here. And in the center of it, it shows you the list of current couplings. So that's just a repeat of the um, coupling list window. And then on the left and right, we see the uh, producer and consumer. We have these producer and consumer windows. And you could set at the top uh, what um, you want, which component you want to look at. Um, so you use this coupling manager to create uh, new couplings and to view couplings that are already there. And so in the producer window, you could sort of decide which component you want to look at. And you'll notice bar chart doesn't have any producers. It doesn't produce values. It primarily consumes values. And so we're mainly going to look at it over here. So this is the bar chart consumer. And you can see there's these different scalar couplings, uh, scalar consumers for the different bars, right? And the number of bars corresponds to uh, the number of, you know, it's set here, right, where you could add more bars, okay? And you could see it automatically updated here. So there's these 14 bars that could consume values. And then there's this vector coupling, which has a different color code, green, um, which just takes a, a, a vector of values and uses that vector to set the uh, values on the different bars. Um, here in the producer window, um, mm -hmm. let's set it to the recurrent network. And we could see that there's a bunch of scalar producers now for the different nodes of the network. And then there's this these um, vector producers. This one's only used for spiking networks, and that is not a spiking network. Um, but we're going to use this one, which is get the activations of the um, 
uh, vector of activations for the group. Okay, and so then we're coupling this to this. And so if we actually, here, I'll just delete the coupling real quick. And in fact, if we now run the network, you'll see nothing. You know, even if we change activity here, nothing's happening there. So then if we go back in and now we select this group one activation vector and the bar chart set bar consumer. Um, and notice they're both the same color, so they're compatible, right? This goes back to this kind of picture, right? We've got a vector producer and a vector consumer. Um, so that we've got a compatible producer and consumer, and so now we could click Add Coupling. So now we have a coupling there, and now it will work again. Okay, so let me show you how to make couplings now. I'm going to use this bar chart network um, as a base. Um, let me open up the coupling manager. I'm going to close. We have this one coupling already in the network or in the simulation, I'll close the bar chart network and notice that it automatically removed the coupling that was there. And let's now make a coupling uh, between uh, two networks, okay? So couplings, anytime you have two compatible attributes, okay, so um, if you have you know so this and this, they're both green, you could add a coupling. So this would be a little weird. This would be adding a coupling from a network back to itself, but that's certainly possible. So there's quite a bit of flexibility in this. Um, so let me make a neuron group over here. I'll leave the defaults. And then let's couple this uh, network to this network using a vector coupling. Um, and so one way to do that is with a coupling manager. So we choose recurrent network for our producer and network four for our consumer. And uh, let's select the group one activation vector on the producer side and then this um, a similar vector, this is sort of receive input values or set input values on the consumer side, and we'll add a coupling. And so now if we run this, we could see that the uh, first 10 nodes of this network just uh, reflect the activation of this group on the left. In this case, it only takes the first, uh, the 10 values here and uses those to set the first 10 values of this group over here. Uh, we could then couple back if we'd like. So I could maybe copy and paste this group over here. But notice I just copied the nodes, not the weights. Um, and so uh, there's no connection, so the, those values will just decay. But we can then couple this back to this. And now I'll show you another way to make couplings. Uh, instead of using the coupling manager, we could right click on this interaction box here and go to receive vector coupling from and then you get a list of all or all the workspace components. And so we've got, we want to receive from network four and we're going to want to receive these activations. This is again for spiking simulations, the spike indices. So let's just get the activations. And let's just double check that it did, it did make that uh, new coupling. And so now uh, we should get sort of a reflection back from here to there and back to here is what's going on. Okay, and so if I just set uh, modify these, you could see it's uh, sort of recreating the activation on that lower those lower nodes. Okay, there are some differences, and I think those uh, are based on the fact that these have an upper bound of 10, these have an upper bound of 1, so there's some truncation happening. Okay, let me do another example now. Let's do a, a, a plot, um, and let's do a time series plot. Okay, now time series plots only take scalar couplings. And so this will illustrate the process of creating a scalar coupling. Um, let's couple from, say, this node to one of these uh, sort of time series. And you, know, you could add or remove these. This is just how many uh, uh, consumer time series there are in this time series plot. Each one will be represented by a different color shown in the legend here. And so let's just couple this node to uh, this first time series. And so what I'll do is I'll right click on the node. Now notice I'm right clicking on the node now, not the interaction box. So right click, it's gotta be selected. Um, send scalar coupling to, so before I was receiving one, now I'm sending one, uh, time series plot, time series one. And now if I run this, you could see we get a uh, plot of the acti activation. All right, and I randomize and it'll kind of change a little. Now we've got a number of couplings going on. We're going from this group to this group, from this group back to this group, and then from this node over to this time series plot. 
Um, let's see, let's make one more. So we've got all these different plots that we could couple to, but there's also all these different worlds we can couple to. And this is really a topic for separate videos. But let's start with a simple one, the data world. And what we could do here is just um, record the activations of one of these networks uh, in this uh, table here. And let's see, let's make it a, let's change the size of it. Let's make it um, have 10 columns. And, uh, oops. Let's set it to iteration mode. And what that does is that every iteration, there's sort of a current uh, row that it's on. And if we now couple, let's say, this group, send vector. Actually, let's use the coupling manager this time. Um, so I want to go from this recurrent network. Uh, and we're going to want group two now. Group two activations, right? So this group um, over to the data world, and we're going to want to use this set current row consumer. And we'll add the coupling, and now when we run the simulation, we've got this kind of um, record uh, of the activations that occur. And if I, as I randomize activation, you could see it's changing. And we can couple back from this world back to any of these networks. We can go directly from here to um, a, some kind of plot. We actually have scalar couplings for individual columns on this as well. And so I hope this gives you a sense there's quite a bit of flexibility. There's a lot of uh, things you could do with these different um, components in terms of wiring them together. Okay, let me end by describing one of the more advanced features of couplings. Um, and that is uh, attribute visibility. So if we go to the coupling manager, um, and here there's just one component in the workspace. So uh, it's network one, which could both produce neuron values. And there's a lot of neurons here you could see. And consume neuron values, um, both with scalar and vector uh, producers and consumers. Um, and so there's a lot going on. There's lots of potential producers and potential consumers that could be coupled together. Um, in these two windows. Um, but actually there's even more and so that is handled via attribute visibility. So the ones we see here are the visible attributes and those are checked here. Um, but there's a few that are not checked. These are currently invisible. So we could let's say, uh, let's uncheck this so that just reduces kind of the clutter. If we just want to focus on uh, vector couplings we could just unclick uh, that. So that's one use of attribute visibility, just limit the things that are displayed. But another use is to, dis is to use, uh, is to couple to something that uh, you normally wouldn't. So for example, um, let's say synapse.getStrength. So this is to use uh, a synapse, a weight value as a producer. We could click on this and it adds all a huge amount of, right? Every single synapse is now a potential uh, scalar producer. And you could see why it was turned off by default. It would just kind of clutter the window. Um, and I guess what what could we couple that to? Bar chart. And remember, bar charts have both vector and uh, scalar couplings. You could either couple to the bars themselves uh, with scalar couplings or to the bar chart as a whole with a vector coupling. And let's just choose a few of these and couple to the six bars we currently have. I guess we could add a few more bars. Um, so we'll do 10 bars and at least 10 here. If you have mismatch, if you have too many here, like so you have like, let's say I have 15 here and 10 here, it'll just do the first 10 and make couplings out of those. Okay, so we'll do that. And so now if we run it, we'll get sort of a snapshot of the state of those different uh, weights. Okay, there they are. Weights between zero and 1.3 it looks like. So let me um, open up the training dialogue. This is a back prop network. And in order for the updates to show here, I've got to be running the network. So I'm going to run or run the simulation. So the simulation is now running, and now I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to randomize and now start training it. And you can see as I do, uh, we get a sort of picture of uh, the changing values of those 10 weights um, as the network is being trained on this task. Now, in a situation like this, what you'd probably want to do if you want to look at weights is use a histogram and that'll let us look at one more thing before the, finish this video. Um, and we could actually do a histogram 
of a the giant sort of weight vector here from uh, this uh, layer of nodes to this one. And so we could right click there, send vector coupling to uh, histogram one. All right, and so now if we run it, we just get a sense of the uh, distribution of weight strengths in the histogram coupling. So um, there are lots of, there's over 700 uh, weights uh, that have, how many weights are there total here? Let's double click on that. So we've got 2,000 weights on that layer. And it looks like about 700 of them are between 0 and 0 0.5. And around 500 are between 0 and negative 0.5. And it looks like we have a kind of Gaussian, it's learned a Gaussian kind of distribution of weights. You could actually watch this change. Well, shall we do it? Let's just do that for fun. Let's watch how the distribution of weight strengths changes as we run back prop. So let me open this up. I'll run this. And I'll randomize my weights and run. And we see this, that the uh, distribution of weight strengths again takes on the same kind of Gaussian. And this is a little more informative. This is uh, even if the particular weights uh, always are a little different every time you run back prop, um, you will probably get a similar distribution of weight strengths visible in this histogram. All right, so that's it. That's the basic of couplings. I hope this gives you a sense of kind of uh, the range of things you could do here. Um, if you do something interesting, make a video of your own. Send me a copy or post a link below.